Have you ever wondered how rocket engines maintain their temperature? Before we talk about that, let's quickly recap some concepts from compressible flow and rocket propulsion. In the converging section of the combustion chamber, the air is subsonic and it speeds up to Mach 1 in the middle. Then the air is accelerated to a supersonic speed. This means that the air inside the engine is speeding up the entire time. You can mathematically represent this by the area Mach relation. Here are four concepts you must keep in mind. As a compressed gas speeds up, its pressure decreases. By the isentropic flow relations, as the Mach number goes up, the temperature will decrease. This means that the maximum temperature is obviously attained at the beginning of the combustion chamber, where the nozzle converging section starts. Lastly, we do need a very high temperature and pressure inside the combustion chamber in order to maximize the performance of the rocket. This is characterized by its specific impulse. For this video, we will focus on liquid rockets as they are the most popular. They consist of a fuel and an oxidizer stored in separate tanks. For example, the LH2, LOX or liquid hydrogen and oxygen. In engineering, there are three main types of cooling. The first one is liquid cooling. The second one is radiative cooling and lastly is regenerative cooling. In simple terms, regenerative cooling is defined as a compressed portion of a gas is first rapidly expanded before it becomes a liquid to cool the rest of the compressed gas. An example of this is using hydrogen gas as a coolant for electric power generators. Since it has a high thermal conductivity, specific heat and low density. You can see that these properties will maximize the heat transfer by conduction and convection formula Q equals MC delta T, which is very popular in engineering. So why do we even need regenerative cooling in the first place? The obvious reason is that material strength degrades as the temperature increases. So the material must not exceed a certain temperature. From this graph, you can see the yield strength of various metals decrease as the temperature goes up. And yield strength, if you may not know, is defined as the maximum stress before which a material begins to permanently deform. Now, you must have noticed that I said gas and not liquid. However, the fuel or an oxidizer is stored as a liquid, right? So in terms of rocket propulsion, Regenerative cooling is the process by which the fuel is pushed via cooling channels located between the inner and the outer wall of the engine before being pushed into the combustion chamber. So if you didn't understand any of that, here is a diagram. Pretty much the converging section of the nozzle is also referred to as the combustion chamber. Take a look at this diagram here to see what I mean. And here is the regenerative cool chamber of the Merlin 1D engine at SpaceX. So since hydrogen is typically used as a fuel, it is pushed through the outer tube where it will then gain temperature. So it will heat up. And this will obviously produce heat transfer outward from the hot side to the cold side. The temperature will cool down inside the combustion chamber and the hot fuel is fed back into the turbo pump. So heat will flow from the hot gas to the cool fluid. This type of heat transfer is called convection. The more the difference in temperature, the greater is the amount of heat transfer. The heat transfer coefficient is also maximized when there is minimum boundary layer thickness and this will occur at the throat of the nozzle. So this is when the convective heat transfer is maximized. You also need to understand that the faster the fuel moves through the channels, the quicker cooling occurs. And this is, can be characterized mathematically by the dittes bolter equation, which is directly proportional to how fast the fluid is moving. Now when this mechanism is taking place, it is important to ensure that the coolant pressure does not drop too much, otherwise it will reduce the specific impulse of the rocket. By increasing the height to width ratio of the cooling channel, 
the temperature of the gas can be reduced drastically and safely without a big drop in coolant pressure as demonstrated by this paper here. So to conclude, regenerative cooling is mostly a convective heat transfer mechanism to cool rocket engines by using the liquid fuel while minimizing the pressure drop of this expanded fuel. It is required to preserve the strength of the combustion chamber materials along with the nozzle wall. Hey guys, what's up? It's Vinayak here. I hope you guys enjoyed that video on rocket propulsion and regenerative cooling. I made it because of popular request. Um, thank you for hitting 6,000 subscribers. I'm very thankful for that. And I do hope you guys had an amazing school year or work year if you're working professionals. Be sure to subscribe to my channel as I cover many videos like this. And for the next year, I have a lot planned. Also, let's set a goal of hitting 10,000 subscribers by next year and I'm confident we will all achieve that and I believe that it's possible. So with that being said, thank you for watching once again and Happy New Year to all. Have a very good Christmas break and I will see you guys next year. Bye-bye.